Welcome to our fifth and final Blackboard discussion on pure competition. In this case, the marginal cost is equal to the marginal revenue right here. That means they'll produce about this much corn. Let's say this is company or farm A. And in this situation, they're ending up getting what? Zero economic profits. Now, with zero profits, are somebody going to come into this market for corn? The idea is no. So when we have zero economic profits, in the long run, nothing's going to happen. No one enters or exits the market. We're kind of at an equilibrium in the long run. So in the long run, this curve looks the same. So again, we're thinking something about the long run approach. Nothing happens here. Zero economic profits, nothing changes. Let's think of a different situation here now. This time we're going to draw a company, and this company is going to make a profit. So we're going to draw the market. Let me see if I can do this pretty quick here. Draw, demand, supply, price, quantity, and corn. And again, we get a kind of $3 equilibrium price. That means something's going to happen over here on the firm. Quantity, price, $3 is what it must accept or take in the market, and that's its marginal revenue. Now, what else is going on? Well, we're going to have to look at the cost, the average total cost. Now, in this case, we're going to draw an average total cost like this. Now, you can see it's getting lower here, isn't it? And we also have to think about the um, marginal cost to figure out where we are going to produce. Now there's the marginal cost, hits the average total cost at the minimum marginal cost. Now we're going to make this decision here. When we do this again, don't forget that we're going to go where marginal cost equals marginal revenue right here. Now that gives us the quantity. Let's say that's 36 bushels of corn. This is company B or company A. Doesn't matter. This is one. Now the cost is down here, the average total cost, and the revenue is up here. So this particular rectangle, like we said last time, is going to equal the profits. So we have positive profits here in the short run. What happens with positive or excess economic profits? What does that mean? Something's going to happen. Companies are going to look at this. They're growing something else, wheat or something or they're doing something else, making soybeans, they're going to say, wow, look at that. This company's making profits growing corn. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to enter the market. So we get companies or farmers entering the market. New companies enter market. In the short run, this company's making a profit. No problem there. But these profits attract new producers. And when new producers come into the market, this supply curve is no longer good. We have to draw a new supply curve because new companies are entering the market. And we end up with S2. And look what happens. We have a new equilibrium output, new companies, higher output level here instead of back here, right? So we have a higher output level. And what does that mean for price? Well, it looks like price is going down, doesn't it? It drops down here. As a matter of fact, the price, see, we should probably put that in a different color. The price is down here, and the price comes all the way down here. And look where this price finally goes. It goes right down to there, which means we have a new marginal revenue line. The marginal revenue is going down. Companies are entering the market, prices are going down, supply is increasing, the supply curve shifting to the right. And when these marginal revenues come down, these profits get wiped out. We have zero economic profits again. So these profits attract new producers, which means supply shifts to the right and the price goes down. This is the long run result or the long run equilibrium point for this particular pure competition model when there are profits. Simple enough, profits attract new suppliers. 
One more model to think about. We'll do this again next week. First, we draw a market like this. Let's say this price is $3, and we end up with a marginal revenue line here. And we've got to draw our cost curves in. Don't forget that. So we draw an average total cost curve. Let's say it's about, oh, I don't know, here somewhere. Now look how high that is. We can tell already something's going to happen. And we have a marginal cost curve that comes down here, cuts the average total cost there. Marginal cost equals marginal revenue is the way we figure out how much to make. Marginal cost equals marginal revenue here. We come down, we find out that this is the quantity that we're going to make in this particular company, right? Remember, this is a company. So the revenue is this small rectangle, and the cost is up here where we find the average total cost. So again, remember, what does this mean? Cost is above revenue. This is an economic loss. What happens in the long run when these companies suffer economic losses? Well, when we su suffer an economic loss, hmm, companies are going to say, you know what? I keep suffering this economic loss. I think I'll stop doing this. You know why? This isn't covering my opportunity costs or my implicit costs as an entrepreneur now. It may be covering my accounting costs, but it's not covering all of the things I could be doing, etc. So I'm going to leave this business. So in the long run, companies leave this industry. What does that mean? That means we're going to have to do something here with the supply curve. When companies leave, supply shifts to the left like this. And when supply shifts to the left, less supply, prices go up. Now we have this new equilibrium price. And look what's happened. In the long run, we come right back to here where we end up at zero economic profits. This is the long run equilibrium in a pure competition model. In the long run, economic profits are equal to zero. So we have an economic loss. Companies leave the industry. Supply shifts to the left. Price goes down. And we end up again where the companies that remain have zero economic profits. That's a good point. Let's look at this again. Here we go. Zero economic profits. No one enters or exits the market. We're kind of at a long-run equilibrium. Something changes, and this company has profits. Guess what happens? Companies start to come in. Supply shifts to the right. Attract new producers. Price goes down. We end up back at zero economic profits. But these profits attract new people, new producers. If this company is suffering a loss, and there are many companies like it, then companies get out of the business, supply shifts to the left. One more quick identification of how this works here. This is what's going on. You have this market over here, and sometimes things change in markets. For example, demand might shift to the right. Prices might go up in this market. And in the short run, we can imagine a company over here with a marginal revenue line that goes up, that used to make zero economic profits, it's now making more profits. So when these profits increase, guess what happens in the long run? For a while, this company here is just making a lot of profits. Now remember, this is a market, a pure competition market. So we don't just have company A, but we have company B, company C, company D, company E, and so on and so on and so on. Lots of companies here. All of their marginal revenue lines are going up. They're all starting to make lots of profits. And people out here, entrepreneurs like this guy over here, looks at this and says, hmm, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to start getting into this business. Let's say it's corn production. Demand for corn goes up. There's more demand due to ethanol. This guy's going to say, wow, I'm going to get in the corn market. So he starts getting in the corn market. And then we have this extra company, X, Y, Z, and so on. More producers of corn, all their marginal revenues. Supply shifts to the right. Now, when supply shifts to the right because of these new producers, look what happens. 
the price goes back down. This little diagram, this mechanism, these prices, this signaling, the profits, the losses, the way this long-run approach works is what we're going to talk about next week.